Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. Good morning, good morning. Hope everyone is doing fine out there. It is another beautiful day here in Florida. Looks like we're going to have a little bit of fun in the afternoon. There's some disturbed weather out there coming in from the west uh, across the east. Looks like it may be some remnants of uh, Hurricane Laura, I think it was, that uh, ended up hitting the coast up in around the Texas area. Uh, Prayers go out for all of those out there here in Florida. We know what it's like to be threatened by a hurricane. It is no fun. Uh, So I wish them the best out there. This morning... I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks. If you want to protect what you love to the max, who are you going to call? Carolyn over at Atlas Tracks. Good morning. Happy Sunday, Rascal. It's gorgeous out here in South Florida. It is. I'm I, looking at the um, at the map here, and there's, there's some. Most of it is over the uh, about the middle and the northern part of the state. And it's moving from the west to the east. And I think it has something to do with, maybe, uh, something to do with that hurricane that was coming through. Because it, it looks like a band that is coming through presently. And uh, right now, it's, it's from, looks like from the Panhandle all the way down to Tampa that uh, this thing has spread. Um, anyway, it's going to be a great day. Let's look at the tides. The tides are 12.47 a.m. So we've already had a tide, a high tide. As of uh, a little over midnight last night, I, excuse me, low tide. High tide is occurring has already occurred. Look at there, 6.49 a.m. this morning. So we're headed towards a low tide. The next low tide will be at 12.56, around 1 o'clock today. And then the following high tide will be at 7.30 tonight. So take a look around and figure out if you want to go fishing. It's going to be a nice day, the earlier part of the day as we get on. You know, we're in the summer uh, cycle now. So as we get on to the day and it heats up, then uh, we're going to probably see some of those thunder boomers. Um, did you get some severe thunderstorms th- last night? No, we actually didn't, and I was up most of the night. I couldn't sleep, uh, just a lot of things going on. Uh, but no, it was uh, no wind, uh, nothing, and, and we could use a thunderstorm because we put up these fun sunshades over our swimming pool, and we have to see if we tied the knots tight enough. <laughs> so we need a good windy storm to come through <laughs> and see if it all falls down. Well, the reason I'm asking is last night at around, probably around 10.30, I had taken the dog out, and of course it's night, so you really can't see up in the sky very well, but it didn't look like there was a whole lot going on up there, a couple of clouds here and there. Taken him out and then brought him back in, and uh, sitting here, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I hear thunder off in the background. And then literally within about, oh, I don't think it was more than 10 minutes, this had rolled up on us, and it was booming all over. It was raining so hard that um, I could hear it hitting the roof, big, big raindrops hitting the roof. And it rained, I mean, just like it was going to be the end of the world for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, stopped, moved on. (laughs) And I thought, wow, that was like a band. It's just what it acted like. It it acted like an outer band of a depression or a hurricane. It came swiftly through here, thoroughly soaked a place, lots of wind, and then just kind of moved on out. I was wondering if uh, you had seen any of that. Beach conditions today? No, you got lucky. Beach conditions today are looking good. <clears throat> Doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on in the beach conditions. They are open. You got to go by the CDC guidelines. You can't have more than 10 people, blah, 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 blah. You know about that stuff. Six feet apart. But at, uh, at least we can go to the beach because there was a time there when they had the beaches closed. So at least we can enjoy that. Uh, the tides, we went went over the tides. Let's see. The um, marine forecast for today, according to uh, NOAA. We're looking at about uh, seas less than two feet. This is off of the Palm Beach area. Uh, Less than two feet, intercoastal waters will be a light chop. And that will follow through into tonight. The winds will pick up a little bit tonight, a little higher. Winds right now, 5 to 10. Tonight will be 10 to 12. Um, So it looks like it's going to be a pretty good day other than that disturbed weather that's moving across us. There should probably be some of that will be here in the afternoon. Um, The high today is going to be... (laughs) Uh, the high today is 350 degrees (laughs) i feel like i'm in an oven oh my gosh so the the high today is going to be believe it or not they're calling the high out at 91 degrees today and that's going to happen somewhere around two o'clock so if you're one of those people who are sensitive to the heat you don't want to be out there around between two and and three o'clock it's going to happen right around that time it's going to get up to 90 and then it'll gradually drop back down 
Average for the day today, believe it or not, it's going to be about 81 degrees. So it's uh, going to be a scorcher, another scorcher. That's one thing. We're used to that, right, girl? <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And, you know, you can't have enough hoses, swimming pools, or canals <laughs> close by on a on hot afternoon. And, and I'll tell you, you know, I love watching video cameras and live cams. And I found one this morning on um, funny.org, which is a Fort Lauderdale camera. And I'm watching right now folks just waiting and in, running into the uh, water line. It is mere flat. Uh, wow. People are walking. I see someone going into lobster dive right now. And uh, yeah, they're great earth cams. If anyone uh, locally is listening or even just wants to check out their area, go to earthcam.com. You can see any of the cameras anywhere in the world. That's pretty cool, huh? How we can, you know, that's part of technology that um, has really, it can, can help you a great deal because uh, there was a time when I remember many years ago, we didn't have this kind of stuff. And if you wanted to know what the beach conditions were and one of our favorite places uh, was uh, Sebastian Inlet. Uh, if you want to know what it was, you either had to call a bait shop up there or one of the surf shops up there, and hopefully they'd answer the phone and they'd tell you what's going on. If not, you'd have to drive up there. <laughs> you want to know what's going on, you drive all the way up there. Now you just get on your well, computer. I'll tell you what's cool, what's, what's cool about the view I have right now. I made it full screen. It appears as though I myself am sitting on the water line. And so for those listeners that are feeling a little cooped up, this is a great way to feel like you're outside. Wow. I've got birds flying in front of me. I've got people, kids running along the water line, just like I'm there. What was the website? Earth what? Well, it's called, uh, the one I'm on right now is sunny.org, just S-U-N-N-Y dot org. Uh, and if you look at the web, webcams, I'm on the Windjammer Resort Hotel win, uh, Windcam. But you can just log on earthcam.com and you could pick any country, any place. And this is pretty neat. I see a few folks walking off the beach to go lobster boat diving right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, it's going to be, a, you know, like I said, the par earlier part of the day, if you're going to do some fishing and you want to kind of hide from the heat right after the show, <laughs> go fishing right after the show. It'll be great uh, because as we get into the day, it's going to get a little warmer. So did you uh, do any fishing this last week? Didn't make it out, but I was uh, hanging out at the docks yesterday. There was a nice little swordfish tournament locally, daytime swordfish tournament. And oh. one of our local customers uh, won with a 220-pounder. Uh, a great, uh, great customer locally in the area, and he has a boat rental company. Um, might have to have him come on, call on. Uh, he has a great young son who's uh, fighting cancer, and he's a great fisherman as well. He's always in uh, winning all the junior angler stuff. So uh, wow. great. They caught a lot of fish yesterday, daytime sword fishing, just like Dean Panos, the uh, expert, talks about. You know, for the longest time, until I started doing this show, for the longest time, I always thought if you're going to go sword fishing, because I had a friend of mine that did it many, many years ago, you go at night. And um, they, believe it or not, they took a, I think it was a mullet. They took a mullet and put a glow, a glow, Glow stick, I think is what it's called, inside inside the fish so that it would glow in the water. And um, they caught a nice swordfish. This is many, many, many years ago. So I always thought it was done at night. And then I started doing a show, and we had somebody out of the Keys originally. They call him the Swordfish Whisperer down there. I think that's who I'm thinking of. And he was saying, yeah, oh, no, we do it during the day. And we have somebody up here as well. We have the, He was on last week with us. I can't think of his name. But he, he, Joe Settembrino. Yep, yeah, Joe Settembrino. And then Dan Panos at Double D Tartar, Charters was one of the first guys to do daytime swordfish. Yeah, so that was the first I'd ever heard of it. And now we have a an entire tournament around it. Um, you have any idea how many boats were in the tournament? I think there were about 26 boats, which is a pretty good turnout. Um, you know, we're so used to fishing tournaments almost every Saturday. So you give us any reason to fish and they're going to put something <laughs> together. And, uh, you. Uh, you know, it could be it could be a, you know, guppy catfish tournament and, and they're in. Uh, so uh, it's good people. That was Trey was out there. You know, Sean Miller from um, Offshore Angle or Pumpkin Beach put it together. Um, another good another good event. A beautiful day for them to be out there. Wow. Any uh, tournaments that you know of coming up? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, we, the my Tracks ladies team is going to be fishing uh, Summer's Tournament, Chase and Tails, which is to raise money for childhood diseases. That is actually September 26th, so we're excited about that. Uh, any of our listeners from that Jupiter area, the captain's party is up at Tiki 52, which is a great venue. Uh, it's like an old school, old Florida village. Uh, that's a lot of fun. And then in November, we have... Um, we have another veterans tournament down here, November 13th and 14th, out of Pompano Beach. So those would be great ones to uh, to attend and offer great, great causes. 
Do you know if um, they've opened up uh, the parks there? Because I think, are you in Broward County or are you you're in Palm Beach County? I am just in Broward County, uh, one town south of Boca Raton. Yeah. Uh, and from what I understand, they are open. Um, you know, I heard you give the beach report. That's pretty accurate. Uh, six feet apart for the beaches. Yeah. Um, still indoor dining is, you know, six feet apart, that type of thing. Um, but, but hopefully, you know, soon things will, will get a little bit better for everybody. Well, the reason I'm asking is they finally opened up the, the parks here. Cause you know, I've, I've mentioned a couple of times I have this park right down the street from me and I take my dog there all the time. And I, and I thought it was so silly that here they, uh, the park is open for the young, it's mostly boys that play the basketball. There's a couple of girls that play, but it's mostly boys. So they're out there playing basketball. Do you think they're practicing six foot distancing? So the basketball court is open, but the playground for the children is closed. The swings have been taken and tied up so they can't even get on the swing. The gazebo is closed. They finally, I think it was Friday, opened all of that back up. It, it just I just didn't make sense to me. How are you going to let these young people play basketball, but you don't want the kids playing on the playground? It just never made sense. So I'm, I'm finally seeing some degree of of logic where they're opening everything back up again and we're able to enjoy the facilities at, at the full function, not a partial function. Um, the next thing I, I want to see is uh, let us open our businesses back up. You know, I feel bad for the restaurants. The restaurants were told that they can only operate at 50%. Um, that's, that's, <laughs> you and I are business people. And we know it's difficult. It's difficult at best to earn a profit at 50%. You're lucky if you're going to be able to keep your head above the financial waters. So that's the next thing I'm going to be pushing for. So let's get back to letting these people open their businesses up. And stop being so, um, I can't think of the right word, like a mother hand over, you know, just following, uh, spread her wings over you and, and cover you and not let you do what you need to do in order to make a living. Uh, so we're getting closer to that, and I'm grateful for that because I'll tell you what, this last five months have really, really worn on me big time. Um, so while we're, you know, I mentioned the, the technology a little while ago, and I, we got a couple of minutes for the next break. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the Atlas tracks. I finally got to see this little mini at Atlas tracks that I've been talking about for so long. What a cool little thing that deal is. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, the the um, sat phone, because I was curious about the sat phone. You have these satellite phones. Uh, they, they, and correct me if I'm wrong, they work anywhere um, on the planet, right? Yes, absolutely. So during COVID, I had to expand my products like most people do. So I picked up three different lines of satellite phones, and they all do a little bit different things. But the concept is, yes, if you turn them on uh, in cellular or out of cellular range, you can dial anywhere in the world. And the cool thing is, the folks I partnered with, you can actually get a local phone number. And why is that so important? Because if you have a local phone number and I need to text you somewhere in Switzerland, I'm just dialing on my side a local number and I'm not getting huge international uh, fees added to my cellular bill. Oh. Um, so that's a really nice feature. Um, and some of these phones even act as trackers. So if you have it on your body, it's even sort of tracking you if you get into a situation uh, and you need emergency help, they have SOS buttons on them. Wow. So um, the technology, I was, I was curious about that. The um, technology that, that of using the sat phone is, um, I, can't write, I can't think of the right word. Uh, I, I can't think of the right word. Uh, having, a, having one of these with you and knowing that it will work anywhere, I thought that, um, I still can't think of the right word. Let me go. Let me go back to a, another thought. You you mentioned that having the phone with a local number, and you're in another country, it acts as a local call. I thought that satellite phones. And this is I'm ignorant and I'm learning. I thought satellite phones was calling anywhere in the world. It was at one price. That's not the case. Satellite phones cost. Um, usually, there's message plans, and then after that, it usually is about a minute or two. Or, or I'm sorry, a dollar or so a minute. But the, the benefit of having a local number is usually in the past, they would assign a crazy phone number 
to a satellite phone. Right. So if I wanted to call you, Rascala, I had to dial 011 Right, like you're calling out of the country. A right. Of numbers. Yep. Right now, all that I have to dial is 1954 and your phone number. So if huh. I'm sitting in Florida and you're in the Bahamas and I desperately need to get a hold of you, because I'm dialing from my cell phone your local number, I'm not getting extra charges on my particular bill that said that, I just dialed an international call. That's, that's a, a huge thing. Is that the hotspot or is that the, the phone that you're that's talking about? Just, just the phone. So, so if I pick up my phone and call you on your satellite phone uh, anywhere in the world, I'm just dialing your phone number, which is assigned to you, which is a local number, mm-hmm. meaning I'm, I'm dialing you in Switzerland, right. but I'm dialing 954 which means that I'm not getting heavy fees as the person calling you and you're not getting heavy fees as the person receiving the phone call. So it's a different way to set up phones now. And I'll tell you, when I, I came up to see you a couple of weeks ago, I, my phone wasn't working. I, I could have just turned my satellite phone on up there in the, uh, out in the West and, and dialed you and texted you and used the internet on it. So, so a phone is nice to have. The hotspot's pretty cool too, because then you can browse the internet you can have up to four or five phones connect to it. So if you have a bigger group, the hotspot's great because it just created your own satellite phone network using your existing That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, but here's what I'm not clear about. If I have a satellite phone, is there a charge per minute? Is, is it like a cell phone where I, have, I pay a, a, a flat amount for an unlimited number of talk minutes? Good question. So, so typically, yes, about $65 a month, and you can have unlimited satellite service anywhere in the world. That's, in some cases, that's less than a cell phone. In absolutely, almost half the price of my cell phone. Um, so, and uh, it's a, such a good safety thing to have. Now, I saw the satellite phone that you had, and it, does, it didn't look like it would, it's not like a smartphone. It's, it's a little different. And it doesn't have a screen like a smartphone, so it, I take it it's only good for uh, phone calls. It's not uh, or texts and nothing else. You can't go online. You can't do any of the other stuff. That's that's correct. For that phone that I showed you, that's available from Global Star, which is a totally free phone. Yes, the other few phones that I carry that get more expensive have the ability to to t- to get basic emails and do a little bit of surfing. But oh. the, the concept of the satellite phone is not to use it for a, a smartphone. Yeah. However, there is an Australian company that makes a satellite smartphone that we are in negotiation with to wow. hopefully bring that here to the States. And that would be like picking up your regular phone that we're all used to and being satellite worldwide coverage. So I'm very excited. Uh, hopefully that'll come through for us in the next few weeks. And nobody has that yet. That, again, one of the things I like about doing this show, always learning. And technology, I'm like a kid in a candy store when we talk about technology. I just, I can't get enough of it. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So if it's a, a satellite phone, you can have, again, I'm not asking you, I'm not, I don't want to corner you for the dollar amount, but it's somewhere around 65 bucks a month. Unlimited calling? Uh, well, I believe when we get to the smartphone type of phone, it's probably going to be more of a yearly fee. And I would guess it was going to be about more expensive, about $900 for a yearly fee mm-hmm. broken up over months. And that's because now you have uh, a good broadband, you have internet, you have texting, uh, you have all of the ability that you have with a normal phone that we're all used to now, but you're, you're carry- it's being carried by the satellites, which cost a little bit more. So we're excited. We're very excited about it because that type of phone, even though it's expensive, has a place for people. And and we're pretty excited about it. Someone that uh, maybe a business owner or someone that wants a family member wants to get away for a longer period of time Mm -hmm. and never really be out of touch from anything. So we're really excited about it. And and, uh, this phone's being used all throughout Europe and Australia and not here yet, but we're hoping soon. So it is unlimited talking for whatever the amount is per month. It it is unlimited talking. Am I correct or am I wrong? That's correct. Yes, sir. And you get text with that, or is the text extra? Also included with that. Browsing for weather is also included. So huh. there's a lot of good safety features that with wow. a phone, you could do everything you need it to do. And, and again, this is out of the clear blue. I'm just thinking, are these phones strictly for sale? Do you rent them? Because I know that there are uh, products in the Atlas Tracks line that you do rent for people. Are the phones available for rent as well? 
That's a very good question, and they are. So typically we buy them and resell them, but we work with the three different suppliers, and they have rental programs that are very affordable. I think it's $20 a day, uh, which is really good if you just need it for a four-day trip or yeah. a weekend. Heck yeah. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. We can we could do get rentals set up for all three of the phones. Uh, as far as you know, our trackers, we – Leave them in my mailbox. People pick them up for the weekend and return them. That happens all the time. Or we mail them out with a return envelope anywhere in the country. So any of our listeners that need a, a tracker for hiking or hunting, uh, you know, fishing, anything that they're doing out there away from cellular coverage is a great uh, option to not have to buy it, but to get to use it. I love it. That's awesome stuff. And then we have the the hotspot, which you can, uh, we talked briefly about that. You can take that, turn it on. If you're out in an area where, you're having a difficult time with uh, cell service, you take a hotspot with you and, and uh, you turn your cell service uh, basically into a satellite service, right? Yeah, that's correct. And I actually went down to the executive airport the other day. We took one of the hotspots and put it into a customer's aircraft uh, to make sure that it worked through the uh, unique windshield with the heating strips and things and and it powered itself on and connected to the satellites within 22 seconds so <laughs> that was a huge success so you can actually use it flying in an airplane that's awesome all right if you want to get more information what you want to do is contact carolyn at atlas tracks a-t-l-a-s-t-r-a-x atlas tracks.com you can get all kinds of information or really neat technology again i'm like a kid in a candy store when it comes to technology i just can't get enough of it all right, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I think we're going to have uh, Carol, your your cohort on the uh, the fishing team. I think we'll have her when we come back. Yep. All right, here we go. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Owner. Call or email us today. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions, don't text and drive. Have you ever heard of Audible? Audible is a website with hundreds of thousands of audiobooks. They're all high quality, easy to listen to, and... Best of all, if you take advantage of a special deal that we've worked out for you, you can get one for free. That's right, a free audiobook of your choice in any genre, simply by going to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and signing up for the free trial. It's simple to do, and it would support the shows that we bring to you, and hey, you get a free book out of the whole thing. So why not take advantage of it today? Go to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and sign up for the trial. Being a dad is an adventure full of special moments. A cruise! Right! Unexpected moments. I got this! And even 
awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids, <laughs> even the smallest moments, <laughs> can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Hey, sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun. All I grab a fishing pole and cast it in the water. I fish until dawn. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing and blowing on. When the sun shines all day. But they call me a group of stars. Fishing and blowing on. Oh yeah. Fishing and blowing on. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. I am your host, Riscala. This morning, I have Carolyn with me. Carolyn is with Atlas Tracks. If you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to call Carolyn over there at Atlas Tracks. Got a lot of background music, uh, sound. <laughs> Let's try it again. A lot of background noise coming in from uh, Carol. Carol, if you can uh, find a little quieter place. We got, looks like, sounds like a lot of air coming in. Uh, welcome back, Miss Carolyn. Miss Carolyn, <clears throat> excuse me. Are you there, Miss Carolyn? Did, did I lose I you? I am here. Oh, yeah, God. absolutely. I was just waiting for you to clear your voice out. And uh, <laughs> when you hit, when you say Carol, and we both always turn over our shoulder because it's one of us that you're looking at. <laughs> uh, well, we have Carol Strickland. Carol Strickland is with Mermaid Vodka. If you want something that is a real treat, unlike any other I've ever had vodka that's out there, you got to try this stuff. This stuff is absolutely amazing. Good morning, Miss Carol. Good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Rascala. How are you both? Excellent. We're so glad you're on the show. We were talking about you a little bit ago. Oh, thank you very much. I I have been out fishing already. We're um we're off of uh, Pine Island fishing the flats over there, and the trout are biting. And uh, oh, nice. Have a good morning so far. Oh, nice. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> what what yeah, time do you guys get off the dock? We left uh, probably about an hour ago. Um, we didn't get, we didn't start too early. It's uh, you know the bike goes on pretty much all day long here. So um, yesterday we fished uh, same area right right out on the flats off of um, uh, Pine Island and St James City. That area went over to Cabbage Key and had a nice lunch in between. It was great. And it was awesome to see uh, Cabbage Key was crowded and. You know, they had a good good uh, group of customers in there, so that's always good. We're happy to see business bouncing back. Amen. And, about time. Uh, yeah, yeah. About yeah. time. It's awesome over here, though. We love, we love fishing this area because it's just, it's easy. Uh, you can get out get out quick and uh, get your uh, lines in the water. We're fishing popping corks this morning, and it's just nice and, nice and easy. Oh, gee. Wow. So is it already warmed up for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, the water temperature was 90 degrees. Holy smokes. Uh, but this mor- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good one. Yeah. The uh, water temperature was 90 degrees and um, we we stopped at three. Uh, the bite did turn off a bit then and we were going to we were going to come back uh, out. But we um, had gotten some snapper and stuff. So uh we did some lobster tails that we had gotten down in the Keys a couple of weeks ago and uh, had some snapper and uh, lobster tails. It was a good dinner. It's always fun to eat what you catch. Gee. Carolyn, we're going to have to make a road trip. I have to I have to tell you, um, Mom was in town last week, and we went down to Carol's for a little barbecue, and we were eating fresh lobster tails that they had cut, uh, I'm sorry, caught just uh, a few days before that. And mm. I'll tell you what, they smelled like the ocean. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. Yeah, we we had an interesting experience. Uh, we were down uh, south of Isla Morada um, lobstering a couple weeks ago, and um, uh, we found a lobster that had a tracker on it, Carolyn. I thought of you wow. immediately. Yeah, yeah, it had a tracker on it, and uh, it almost looked like um, a little camera. So we're like, are we on candid camera? What's going on here? Because <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've never found one that's had a... Uh, a tracking device on it. So I we never called, heard of uh, that. Fish and Wild- no. 
we called Fish and Wildlife, and of course it was the weekend, so they were all out busy. But they called us back Monday morning. Um, we kept them alive for a day, and they called us back Monday morning and said, uh, "Yeah, that's um, uh, Cornell University. It's their tracker." So they uh, connected us to the uh, doctor that was in charge of the project. They were doing some kind of tracking. They had, I think, about a dozen of them, and uh, ours was the uh, only one that had been um, retrieved without being, mol you know, having been molted. So. Uh, they came by, they, they took their, their part of the lobster and left us with the tail. So we were happy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, now you got me curious. How big was this tracker? Oh, uh, gosh, it, it was maybe, maybe a quarter inch, half inch. Wow. It really wasn't very big. It, wow. it was quite small. I mean, you know, we didn't see it till we got it up in the boat, um, when we were measuring everything off. So, um. Anyway, and so I guess they're following the, the the what they do during the day. Maybe they're following their I can't think of the word. They're, they're following their trails during the, the day. The history. Yeah, the migration pattern. Yeah, sort of, yeah, yeah. They're, they're looking at that. And um, this one was was really found quite far from where they put it in. So they were really excited about it, and they came and took pictures. And nice people, super nice. Um, you know, just they were happy to get their device back. Uh, I think they said their tracker cost. Uh, Four or five hundred dollars, Carolyn. So you might want to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you know what, Carol? I'm wondering how did they attach it to the shell? Did they look like they glued it on? She beat did they strap me to it, it on? Yeah, no. yeah. It was it was glued on. Oh. It was glued on. And, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he said he goes, yeah. We usually just plan on either losing some of them or they just get molted off. And uh, it, you know, e even when they find the molt, they can still you know retrieve their tracker. But um, it was just really a cool experience and, wow. in all the years and never finding one before. So I'm, I'm standing here. I'm standing here on the phone with you watching Bruce reeling in snapper after snapper. It's, <laughs> you know how that feels. <laughs> and they're good size. too. Oh my good. Well, let him do the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I'm just, he does. He catches it. He cooks it. It's per It's perfect. Oh my <laughs> he goodness. It. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's yeah. great. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, curious about that tracker thing. I've never heard. I don't. Have you ever heard anything like that, Carolyn? Where they're tracking? No, lobster? but I, I haven't. But I'm hoping Carol has a picture of it so I can yeah. uh, I can kind of uh, you know post something fun. I mean, we do icebergs. I've never thought about lobsters, but yeah. lobster pots we've been asked to track uh, up in in Boston. So we might uh, get on that project just to trap the uh, put trackers on the balls. Wow. So uh, yeah, Carol, if you have photos, I'd love to see it. Oh yeah, yeah, we got lots of pictures. I'll send them over to you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. And we were also talking about the ladies' team, how we have another tournament finally coming up in September 26th, and uh, don't know which of the two boats we have access to we're going to fish, but that's out of Jupiter for summer tournament. And, uh, you know, if uh, anything else you want to add, uh, we certainly uh, we can't wait to get back together as a, t as a team. Yeah, I'm looking forward to fishing the, the chase and tails, and, you know, it's always always a great time to fish with our team. And uh, we may be a little rusty because we haven't practiced as a team together for a while. But we can always pick it back up. Right uh, it's like riding, off. like riding a bike. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. We have great crew, great captain. I mean, we we couldn't ask for um, a better setup, could we, Carolyn? No, no. Um, they even bring us sandwiches, and we're supposed to be the ones bringing sandwiches. So they they take really good care of us. Oh my goodness. And they've got some some special things they're doing for the team. They always give us team, new team jerseys every tournament. Um, you know, just, just so we all look good. And uh, we appreciate everything the real Caps meeting team does for us. And, uh, and Rascala, you even met the guys the other day. I mean, you know how awesome and generous that, that the whole yeah. group is. Yeah, I, unbelievable. Now, I think... Oh, you got to meet them. That's awesome. Um, I think that you have... What do you got, shirts or something that you were selling for the team? What, 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 is, what was that? Absolutely. So this all just happened yesterday. They've been working on a new uh, a secondary logo for us. Um, they are going to be printing and offering these awesome pink lady shirts, and 5% of all the sales go to whatever charity the customer wants to pick. So in our battle tournament package, we've got a, a long-sleeve white zipper shirt. We've got a pink long-sleeve shirt, uh, a water, a nice water tumbler, a coffee cup, a towel, 
uh, sunblock, all the things you need to, uh, and a knapsack, all the things you need to take to just jump on a boat and go. Uh, so we'll be posting posting that up. They can buy that on realcaptivating.com. They can get it through any one of the girls on the team. Um, but we're actively selling the packages now in men's and women's and children's sizes. So we're super psyched that they put that together for us and, and um, are helping us be able to pay it forward and raise money for future That's charities. Cool. Because a part of the part of the proceeds go back. You know, this is what uh, what's good about dealing with uh, locally owned small companies is that many of them give back to the community. So it's not a one way street; it's a two way street, and that's the same way that you will find uh, with people like Carol. She has um, mermaid vodka gives back. Uh, and Carolyn is another example. They give back. That's one of the reasons that we want people to start think more than ever now. We we want people to consider doing business with a small company because it is the small ones who are suffering drastically right now during this time. It is the small ones that really, really need our help right now. So consider that. If you've got an item that you want to buy and you've got a choice between a small company, locally owned company versus a large corporation, I would hope and pray that you would choose a small company because it does come back for us. It comes back to help us all. Where with a corporation, uh, not so much. And I think anybody who has had to deal with some of these corporations knows exactly what I'm talking about. If you have an issue of some sort and you have to talk to somebody, uh, you're going to spend a lot of time on the phone with them. And you might not even get what you need before it's all over other than a headache and maybe some heartburn medicine uh you're not gonna get what you need but if you're dealing with yeah i'll tell you go ahead sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you i was gonna tell you a quick story but yeah go ahead now uh along that line we were um contacted by a charity over in sarasota called vintage paws they're they rescue senior dogs and i mean they do amazing work really amazing and they partner with uh pilot for paws which is a, a organization nationwide where people with their own planes will fly and do rescue missions for uh, for dogs. So anyway, they had contacted us about um, sponsoring uh, their golf tournament. And it's golf, but, you know, hey, golfers like to drink. We know that much. They love vodka. So we, uh, we sponsored their tournament for them. And during the course of that tournament, they were telling us how they had reached out to a very large vodka brand that claims to be uh, – vodka for people who love dogs and uh pretty much got the door slammed in their face and she uh the person in charge of the tournament jennifer hummel she's it's her charity her nonprofit. she was just so so elated that we were able to um offer her sponsorship for her tournament and be on site with some mermaids and you know it's just uh it was a great partnership we've done several several fundraisers with them but just I just wanted to throw that out there because the, along your your point there, Rascala, you know we're we're in the local community, and if we can possibly find a way to do uh, anything that supports the community, we do it. Even during these difficult times, uh, we just did the Sarasota Slam over in Sarasota, the fishing tournament there. We sponsored Captain Jeff Page and his team. Oh, cool! So we we yeah we sponsored a you know an A team into the tournament, and it really brought a lot of excitement. It brought a lot of other uh, other anglers into the tournament so we were really happy and that went out for uh, cystic fibrosis a, a cause that's near and dear to both carolyn and my my heart so uh anyway i didn't mean to interrupt but no. i just wanted to that's, share that's that with you testimonial to again dealing with a small locally owned company everybody wins and and that's the reason why i i i i'm so um passionate about it is that i'm part of everybody i mean in a way it's kind of selfish but i'm part of everybody and when everybody wins when we can work out a deal where both parties win those are the kind of deals that i that i try to my best to achieve because in those kind of deals you build relationships and that's the kind of thing that happens when you're dealing with a small locally owned company it's my family owned company oh my gosh you become part of the family you become part of the extended family and that's how they treat you basically you become part of their extended family ouch a lot of no- a lot of noise on your end there carol sorry about that that's a good quick question here. quick question on mermaid vodka i know things are different without the bars being open but if our listeners want to reach out and try and find mermaid vodka what, how can they find that now uh, that's a great question. Thank you. It's uh, our website gives all the information about the different retailers that carry mermaid vodka. Our website's mermaidvodkausa.com. 
And of course, we're in the big box stores, so Total Wine and um, ABC, uh, local Florida uh, company, ABC carries us. Um, but we also have a lot of independent retailers, and they're listed on our website. And if they can't find one, all they got to do, our contact information is right there on the website. And they can simply email or uh, call. You know, I, I put my own phone number out there on the website. I want to be there for people. And if someone has an interest in our product, we certainly want to make sure we, we get it into their hands. I know at one time you were uh, considering... Uh, selling online for those people who aren't don't have any of these distributors anywhere near them. Did you ever do that? Did you ever open that part of it up? We do. We do. We're available uh, to ship to all the states nationwide that allow shipping into the state. There are uh, some states where it's restricted, uh, unfortunately, because one of them is uh, Pennsylvania. And when when uh, they shut all alcohol sales down in the state of Pennsylvania, our website was going crazy. Um, with people hitting it, trying to buy to ship into the state. But mm-hmm. we comply with all the laws because we, we want to keep our business and um, respect the law. But uh, most of the states do allow it. So uh, people just have to go on and click on. We have a uh, button on there that says, uh, get hooked, buy now. And um, they can order it and we'll ship it right to, well, we don't ship it. It goes through a distributor, but the distributor will ship it right to them through a retailer. So we Again, we have to comply with all the laws. So it makes it pretty easy to, if you want to get your hands on some of this stuff. It makes it pretty easy. Uh, if you don't have somebody locally nearby, one of the big box stores nearby, you can get on the internet and place an order, and I think it'll deliver it right to your house, right? It's like a UPS or oh, FedEx. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? yeah, as long as someone 21 years or older is available to sign for it. Mm-hmm. Again, yeah. that's, uh, that's that a, makes it a pretty legal easy. requirement. Yeah. That makes but, it pretty you know, easy, it's right? It's never been a problem. We've never had anybody, uh, you know, have an, an order that wasn't delivered. It's just like any other shipping. You know, you just we just follow the uh, the rules and regulations, and we'll get it right in their hands. That's great. So, um, K- Carol, uh, excuse me, Carolyn, <laughs> get the two of you on. It's like, oh, my God. Carolyn, I hear you in the background there. What's your question? Oh, see, how do you know that, Riscala? <laughs> you, you actually asked the same question I, w- I was asking because I have some friends that are out of the state and wondered how to, how to be able to buy it and ship it out. And uh, that was one of the main things I wanted to find out so I could share the news because even though sales are down, you know, bars are closed here, they're not other places. So I want to help Carol any way I can to, to get some of that shipment going. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I thought I remembered her saying something about that early on, that they were considering doing that, and they were having, it was an issue of some sort, so I'm glad that all that has been overcome, and, and again, it's just pretty easy, I mean, that's probably the easiest way of all of them, you just get on your computer, place an order, and I don't know, maybe a day or two later, it will show up at your house, <laughs> you can't make it any easier than that, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Don't even need to leave your house, uh, they'll, they'll bring it to you, and you'll have it on your bar in minutes. Hot dog. All right, Miss Carol, while we're up against a break, I want to say thank you for taking time to call in. Tight lines out there today. Enjoy your day, and uh, looking forward to hearing about the tournament here coming up with you guys. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it, and I'll uh, we'll, we'll look forward to updating you from Chase and Tails. So Great. thanks, Carol. Appreciate it. Post them up later on the page. Okay. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped. Even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want. 
Give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Call or email us today. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care, they're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care. 561-793-9992. They're located in Royal Palm Beach. That number, 561-793-9992. Call for your appointment today. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. We have ignition. Strap in. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. Oh, I grab my vision pole and cast it in the water. And fish until dawn. Oh, my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing and blowing on. When the sun shines all day. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning, good morning, and thank you for joining us. Hoping that uh, you're enjoying this day as I am. I was out this morning with my dog. It was a, kind of a, a nice change and crisp and cool out here where I'm at, of course, I'm way out west, but uh, it was a nice change because usually we walk out in the morning and it's like literally like walking into a sauna. So it was a nice, brisk, cool breeze this morning. Not going to last very long. <laughs> around 2 o'clock, it's going to be around 91 degrees, so uh, it's going to be a scorcher out there. This morning, I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks with me. If you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to call my friend Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. Welcome back, Miss Carolyn. So much, Rascala. I always love having Carol on because she always has a fishing pole in her hand. <laughs> and I get the two of you on. I'm like, eh, I don't know which way to go. And while I'm while I'm thinking about it, I want to say a big thank you, WCET Radio. That is our home network. Uh, you can several different ways you can listen to us. WCET Radio, www.wcetradio.com, or wcetfm.com. 
Uh, you can go there. There's a player there. You can uh, go to our Facebook page. If you uh, are a Facebook fanatic, go to the Facebook page, Fishing in Florida. Give us a like while you're there. That helps us remain relevant in the searches. And uh, if you click on Contact Us, you'll be able to listen to the show live as well. And the last way, of course, is the app. We have a free app you can download. It doesn't cost you anything. There's no uh, push notifications, no ad, no spyware, none of that stuff. Um, and that's probably the easiest of all the ways to listen to the show. If you are a TuneIn user, we want to say a big thank you to Marina Rock Radio. Marina Rock is out of Miami. It's uh, Yacht Rock's sister station, and they are a TuneIn station. So if you have the TuneIn app, you can use the TuneIn app, find Marina Rock Radio out of Miami, and you can find us that way on Sunday mornings as well. A big thank you to Marina Rock for what they do for us. They help us get the word out there. And hopefully other people enjoy it as much as we do. Um, let me bring on my next guest. That would be um, Mike Lindell. Mike is, uh, he puts on a tournament called the King of the Glades Tournament. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good, How's it going? Good, Mike. Welcome to the show. Yes, uh Fishing, fishing has been pretty good. Uh, you know, the summertime pattern uh, is really starting to kick off. So, there, believe it or not, even at 91 degree, you know, heat, uh, people are out there catching some really nice bass. And, uh, for example, yesterday there was a tournament, a fa- it's called Fast Break Tournament up on Okeechobee. It was on the north side of Okeechobee. And one of my good friends, Mikey Queso, won with over 25 pounds. Uh, he won $10,000. There was... Nice. Probably twelve. Yeah, there was probably twelve limits, and the top the top twelve all had you know right at or just over twenty pounds. So, pitching and flipping uh, the outer uh, sawgrass heads outside the channels and stuff. You know, pitching crawdads and jigs, and then up in the canals, uh, fishing crankbaits and uh, shaky heads. You know, up in the canals, uh, I've been catching some really good bass on the north side of Okeechobee. I'm glad that uh, to hear that there's more and more uh, activity with regard to tournaments because it has really been curtailed quite a bit the last five months or so. So uh, it's it's uh, uplifting to hear more and more. We heard about that. Carolyn was telling us about a swordfish tournament that they were having here. And uh, Carol and Carolyn, I have to <laughs> I'm get the two of them confused. Carol and Carolyn will be in a, another tournament coming up just in a couple of weeks, right, Carol? Just, uh, uh, Carolyn, a couple of weeks? Yeah, absolutely. September 26th, Chase and Tails out of Tiki 52 up in the Jupiter area. We can't wait. Uh, it's been a while since we've been together and since the whole group, the fishing community has been together. And this is a real good one for Summer Warren and uh, Chase and Tails uh, Foundation. I know that. Uh, oh, that's, all, that's awesome. I know that you do the um, the King of the Glades. Any of that going on right now? Uh, King of the Glades kicks off in January, the first Sunday of January up at uh, Cluiston. Um, I look forward for the series to start. There's actually, uh, I'm in the middle of a series right now, uh, the Roland Martins Tournament Series, uh, which kicked off two months ago up on Okeechobee. Uh, they got two more rounds to go before the, actually, yeah, two more rounds to go before the championship. Uh you know, it's been uh, pretty good fishing. I mean, I, actually, I'm surprised there's any tournaments right now because they opened up that new uh, STA area up by Bureau Beach called Headwaters, and every angler in South Florida has been running up there. There's already been three bass over 12 pounds caught Holy and a, a bunch of bunch of nine pounders caught. The only concern that I, you know, that, that I, I actually, I, I don't know if I should laugh about it, Rascala, or not, but. It's an STA area. They flooded out some farmland. There was two giant rock pits up there full of big bass. So when they flooded it out, all these giant bass came out. They stocked it with 2 million bass fry a couple of years ago to give it an extra push. It's full of hydrilla, full of grass. Well, I mean, it's the way it's the way every body of water in Florida should look. And mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, yesterday we got our first glimpse. Uh, a couple of you know spray boats are already starting to hit it up there. And that's supposed to be an area that clean the water so i don't i don't get it you know i, I don't know if it's a money thing or, or they just be. want to give extra jobs or what but yeah they're already starting to hit an sda with uh spray boats but every flow you know every bass angler in florida <coughs> is running up there to look for a giant trophy catch and i actually went up there a couple weeks ago 
and had a phenomenal day. Caught 75 bass up to seven Holy pounds. Smokes. Wow. And, uh, yeah, uh, I was throwing the bruiser baits, the big, nasty 14-inch worm with a light weight and a uh, frog. And probably one of the best days of fishing I've had in a long time as far as numbers. And I just hope they uh, they don't overspray it like they've done the rest of the, the lakes wow. in South Florida. Well, we can do what uh, one thing we can do, and that's uh, we can write emails. Uh, we can send, uh, make a phone call, and just tell them we don't agree with what they're doing. It's really sad um, because a lot of these chemicals that they're spraying are extremely toxic, extremely toxic, and they don't help with the blooms either because they react with the blooms as well. And so nobody, this is you know, I like to do things where everybody wins this is 180 degrees everybody loses the the the, the environment yeah, loses. unfortunately unfortunately the spray department of the fwc is paid for federally so it has to be somebody up in washington that defunds it you know and that's where you know everybody needs to push is up at you know at their the congress level the senate level mm-hmm. and try to get somebody up there to listen to the to defund the uh, spray program of the FWC. Well, if you get enough of us to call up there, I'm sure they'd bend their ear and uh, they'd maybe pay a little more attention to us. Uh, but the idea of spraying these, again, it's anybody who's listened to my show knows that I have a passion for creating a win win situation. This is the 180 degree. Everybody loses. The environment loses. The fish lose. We lose. Everybody, nobody wins in the thing. And, 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 well, somebody wins. Somebody's making some money because that's usually what it all boils down to is, is money. Oh, um, yeah. the Actually, uh, the owners of the companies uh, were, okay, you know, were, you know, people taking pictures of them. They're out in their, you know, six, seven hundred thousand dollar saltwater boats enjoying the ocean. They, wow. they don't even know pretty yeah. much what's going on, you know, in the lakes of our states being destroyed. But. I mean, fishing has been decent. Uh, mile marker 41 on the alley. There's There's been some uh, bass and peacock bass caught out at mile marker 41. It's starting to pick up a little bit. The Lake Ida Osborne chain, uh, there was some good bass caught up on the Osborne side of the chain. Uh, just bridge fishing doing summertime patterns, you know, uh, shaky heads and sankos and, you know, big worms, you know, by the bridges, you know. So fishing is decent. Um we need the grass back, though. That, that's what yeah. makes great. There's a difference between good fishing and great fishing. And in order to get the great fishing back down here, we need hydrilla. And I'm not going to stop pushing for them to. That's the filter. To that's the water the filter. That yes. we, the water filter that helps keep the water clean. Do you find, um, because we're ta- we're primarily talking about freshwater now, you find right. that it's it's better in the morning, better in the afternoon when it heats up, or is it better in the evening as it cools back down? Do does a you know I, I've talked to different people who fish the saltwater and they say that the um, the different um, temperatures coming in, not the temperatures. I, I can't think of the the right word when not, when the hurricanes come in and they have a highs and lows. The barometric pressure, as the barometric pressure changes, it affects the saltwater. Do you find that true in the freshwater as well? Uh, actually, I do. They're like, for example, if a hurricane was approaching and the barometric pressure was going off the roof, the fishing the day before is amazing. Wow! Um, but in the summertime, in the summertime, what I look for. And, you know, as far as a summertime pattern goes, like if I was going to headwaters to look for a trophy catch, I would look in the, uh, you know, the 10-day forecast, and I want to go up there on the windiest day because in the summertime, the wind ripple breaks up the UV going into the water, which allows the bass to roam around more in the open water. So I like to go on the windiest day of the week, or if it's, calm in the morning but it's going to pick up at 11 o'clock i won't even go out till 11 o'clock i want that wind ripple that's what i look for in the summertime wow um with regard to the uh, different lures and and uh, the tackle that you're using i know that you shocked me one day because i think it was you that told me use like 50 pound test was that you that told me that Yes, I use a uh, 50 pound braid even on my top water lures. And the reason being is, you know, you're, you know, unfortunately what we're left with is lily pads. And especially up at headwaters, there's dead trees in the water, you know, from flooding the, or- the orange groves and stuff. And 
you know, you got to, if you get a, a big bass on, you got to be able to turn her head quickly. If you can't turn her head and she goes down in that stuff, you're going to lose her. So mm. I use 50 pound braid for casting my top waters. Um, I use 65 pound braid for pitching and flipping crawdads into, you know, the cover that we can find. And I do use 17 pound fluoro and 17 pound mono when I throw my big worms down deep and I like bridge fish or, or stuff like that. I was so, I was so shocked when I, when I heard that, cause I was kind of ignorant. I said, I thought, well, you're in a freshwater fish and you're fishing for, you know, the, a big freshwater fish is around 10 to 12 pounds. That's pretty big fish. So I'm thinking, well, maybe 15 pound test. And then you tell me 50, I'm going, holy smokes, man. Uh, it, that just kind of threw me off. I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that. But then you, you know, like you explained, it's, uh, it's not like the ocean where you have a lot of water and, you know, just a couple of things around that can mess you up. You got literally yeah, if I go, everything. If I, go, like when I, I fished uh, two weeks ago. I got a nine and a half pounder up at Lake Placid, which is a deep, one of the deep water lakes of Flitch in central Florida. And I was actually using 17 pound fluoro with a three quarter ounce Carolina rig, but I used a 12 pound fluoro leader to a 14 and a half inch uh, bruiser bait big nasty worm. I was, I think I was throwing the watermelon red one. And basically what I was doing was I was dragging shell bed in 25 foot of water. And up there, you're, you're able to get away with using the lighter line leaders and stuff because you're fishing open water. There's no, hmm. no structure that's going to, you know, they can get, you know, it's mostly 99% is just as uh, a scholar is just to turn the fish's head. That's why we, we use the heavy, you know, the heavier line is because you've yeah. got to be able to turn that fish's head. You can't do it with 10 test pound line. Hmm. Makes sense. All right, Mike. My... I, I forgot when uh, when you do tournaments, you're actually bringing the fish in live, right? You're putting them in live wells, and then they end up getting released. Yes, we bring in our five biggest fish, and ninety nine percent of the tournaments, it's your you know, the total weight of your five biggest fish, and then they pay for the single biggest fish of the tournament. So, uh, I think the biggest tur- uh, fish yesterday up at the lake, I think it was like around eight and a half pounds, and the biggest five bag, you know, Mikey Queso had the, the biggest limit of just over 25 pounds of five fish. Wow. And it's such a great way for conservation. Continued catching is, is yeah. just such a great idea with a bass fishing tournament. Yeah. yeah, we were real nervous about the new STA being opened up in Vero Beach. I'm still not sure if it's because a lot of the lakes up there that are STAs are catch and release and I'm not sure that this one's catch or release. I have to check. I'm hoping it is because what's ha- what's happening is they're getting a lot of because it's one of the best fishing or fisheries in Florida right now. I mean, you could you you guys could go up there and catch 50, 60 fish no problem. You could Holy throw a bubble gum in the water and catch fish up there. Oh my gosh! The thing of it is, is the thing of it is with it being promoted the way it's being promoted, people are coming down from up north, Georgia, or, you know, Alabama, New York. They're coming down here to look for that trophy catch. And a lot of them, if they catch it, they're going to keep it to get it mounted, even though they make fiberglass mounts now. So I'm, yeah. um, you know, really keeping my fingers crossed that FWC was smart enough to make uh, Headwaters uh, catch and release. Hmm. Wow. All right, my friend. I want to thank you for taking time to call in. Of course, we're up against a break and we're out of time. I want to give Carolyn an opportunity to say goodbye to you. And uh, I'm looking forward to an update as, uh, as we get down the road here. Thank you, Mike. Greatly appreciate it. Wish you an awesome day, my friend. God bless. Thank you, and I uh, appreciate it. Uh, I'm getting my new boat in January. Once I get it, we'll all have to head out. Congrats. Day, so. Hot dog. Tight lines, Mike. You too. Take care. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitt. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped. Even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. 
There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett-Packard, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Call or email us today. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclub.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561 561- 795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their links, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions. Don't text and drive. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning, good morning. If you're just joining us, we will have archives set up. And the best way to find them is to go to Facebook. Yes, we are Facebook fanatics. Go to the Facebook page, and um, you'll find a link there to our archives, which are actually on YouTube, but I just haven't figured out how to get people to find them on YouTube. Uh, this morning, I have Carolyn. Carolyn is with Atlas Tracks, and if you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to talk to my friend Carolyn over there at Atlas Tracks. Welcome back, Miss Carolyn. She's in there somewhere. <laughs> I can't hear you, Carolyn. I don't know if you're on. Oh, hang on a second. I think I think I know what's wrong. There we go. All right, that was I'm my back. fault. Welcome back, Miss Carolyn. Absolutely, I, I am really excited about our next guest. Yes, uh, that is. <clears throat> you want to introduce our next guest? I. Jim Ott is our next guest, and a funny story is I went and was hanging out at a local tackle shop yesterday in Lighthouse Point called Custom Rod and Reel. And uh, Jim was over there, and we both hung out so long because I was dropping off some of the team shirts. I thought he was working there. It turns <laughs> out that both of us were just hanging out. <laughs> well, he, he's a local fishing legend. His family's always fished. Uh, he's got a little charter business going. And uh, Jim, welcome to the show. We'd love a fishing report. And uh, it was great hanging out for hours with you yesterday. Yes, it was. Thanks for having me. <laughs> So tell us, tell us a little bit about what, uh, a little bit behind the scenes about the family. Uh, Carolyn has got me curious now. She says that you, uh, your family's almost a legend here in South Florida, and uh, yeah, you fished all, all of your life. Parents, yes, I have been. I've been on the boat ever since I've been six weeks old. I Holy traveled smith. to the Palms with my parents every summer for fourteen summers. <laughs> so my dad was a firefighter and a boat captain, and my mom was a flight attendant. So every summer. Around like this time of the year, like we after I got out of school from May in the May to like August is when we were over in the Bahamas every summer for 15 summers. So that's how it's been. And then wow. I've been fishing around here all my life too. So 
You know, you hear the story about when some people born with a silver spoon in their mouth. I think you were born with a boat <laughs> hanging on. <laughs> I can't go for It keeps me out of trouble. Wow. And, and Jim, I, I uh, shared some of the photos with Rascala from your mom's page when you were ba barely a baby sitting on your dad's lap running a boat. So, uh, and, and not only does Jim fish like crazy, he, he <laughs> volunteers his time with the Bill Fish Foundation like I do. He's always out there helping people. Um, uh, yesterday, I think, were you dropping off some bait you had caught for the yeah. custom yeah. on reel? Yeah, I, 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 we do a lot of sword fishing out here outside of, outside of Fort Lauderdale, and I was ringing some bonita bellies to drop off the custom on reel so they had some sword baits for people to buy to go sword fishing with. Wow. You know, I haven't heard about sword fishing so much Um as as much as I have, maybe reword that. I haven't heard about sword fishing as much as I have recently. It, um, oh my gosh, years I hadn't heard about sword fishing. Of course, I've only been doing this show now for we're going on four four years, I think. Uh, we've been doing this show, um, and it seems to be that it, just to me, the what I'm seeing anyway, my perception of it. It seems to be that it's more and more popular. It, it, am I right? Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, it's 100 percent more popular now. It's, it's uh, you don't really the daytime fishery. You don't have to get up and sit out all night long from yeah. like, you know, seven at night to five in the morning, and then God forbid you're 20 miles offshore. You know, at least in the daytime, if God forbid something happens, there's a lot of boats around you. So if you hook a big fish or you have mechanical problems, you can you're at least out there in the daytime, not so much at night. Yeah, yeah. It's, but and... I do I do sport, I do commercial fishing on my buddy's boat. Bahama Mama Charters. I also run charters with him too, but we also do com commercial sword fishing. So we do. I do. I'm always offshore, a far distance. So I'm used to it. <laughs> and you know, uh, Riscala, I saw him yesterday. His face was all sunburned except for where his glasses cover. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that'll just tell you how often he he's I'm, out there. I'm, but, uh, I'm only laughing because you remind me of a friend of mine. I think I, I shared a story with you before where. They would do these fishing trips. They called them hero or zero. They went out specifically for one thing. And if they didn't get it, then too bad. And if they got it, they, be, they were heroes. And he would fish. He would literally be out there for a whole weekend. And when he'd come back to work on Monday, it, and I would look at him, his whole face would be like a lobster except for the area around the eyes where he had the glasses. They were all white, 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 white. <laughs> well, that's how uh, I that's how my face looks 20, 24 7, 365 days. <laughs> yeah. And you know, um, and, and we talk a lot about family fishing as well. Jim goes out with his mom, Carol, all oh, the sweet. time. And the pictures on Facebook are amazing. They're, so they still fish as a, as a family. How sweet. Uh, that was uh, one of my greatest experiences growing up. The reason I do the show is because my family loved fishing. And uh, fortunately for me, my mom was just somebody who naturally loved fishing and so it didn't hold us back it was a family oriented um activity and i really think it played a vital part of keeping us as a close-knit family you do you, did you experience a similar thing yes do 100 percent i i much rather go fish with her than most but does anybody <laughs> any, any time anyway as much yeah. as i do it yep yeah, and that's, yeah. So when you get out there, we don't really have to communicate much. You all know what our job is and what what, what we do. And it's like in a well-oiled machine that's been running for like you know, it's like a car that runs forever. It's just we've been doing it for so long. It's like it doesn't really take any pressure on us. We have a good time. We miss a fish here and there. You know, it happens. Whatever. We don't you know? We try to make it as much fun as we can because you know, life is short. So. Amen. Well, have you got uh, any? Any idea what's going on with regard to the fishing right now? Any uh, any re reports coming in? Um, yes, uh, the, I know the sword, there was a daytime swordfish tournament yesterday that uh, OB, OBOB, I think, or the, the, Pom, the uh, Pompano Beach Club fishing tournament, they fished yesterday. There was a, like a handful of daytime swords caught. I think the biggest fish was 202 pounds nice. yesterday. Nice. Uh, on the reef, there's been a lot of kingfish up and down the coast between a 100 feet of water to 200 feet fishing live baits or you control uh, fishing live goggle eyes or you can fish um, a, a planer with a beneath strip on the other end of it and you, you catch the same thing. There's been some wahoos around too showing up because it's full moon. It's coming. Mm. 
So the form. Yeah, um, I was in the uh, Ruskella. I was in the store yesterday. You showed me a picture of a 60 pound plus Wahoo. Tell me about that one. Oh, we caught that. I, I, I work. I mate with my uh, one buddy that has a charter business up on Palm Beach. I've known him for five years. It's because when we fish the tournament circuit out here in Florida, it's really a small community. So uh, he was having trouble with his, his dad had like a hip replacement. And uh, so he needed some, uh, somebody to help him out with. So I'm like, oh, I'll come help you out. So I've been fishing with him for like a year. And it's amazing when you fish with different people, how much stuff you learn. And we're out there fishing the other day. We're out off of Palm Beach. We're fishing live baits, live goggle eyes. And we had one down like 50, 60 feet. And the rod bends over and, Dumps about 500 yards of line off on the reel in about 30 seconds flat. Oh, gee. And we knew it was a big Oahu. The thing was 72 inches long by 26 <laughs> inches around. So the thing was probably around 80 pounds, is what we guessed. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> 70, well, well, that's well, as big as I am. That's as tall as me. That's six yeah, feet. Yeah, tall as me. I'm 5'8 five, five on a good day. So that thing was way taller than me. Wow. And how long did you yeah. fight with it? Uh, about 25 to 30 minutes. We had a charter or two, which is really cool because these people don't realize what they caught. And you're trying to explain it to them, and they finally got, got realized what they caught. Um, if you want to give him a check out, he's on uh, he's on Facebook. Is um, he's under Carl Torson is his name, but his uh, his charter boat's name is called Slob City Charters. He's a good guy to look up. No, you, you you charter your boat too, Jim? No, I did not charter my boat. I freelance. I, I don't turn on my butt at all. Take a bunch of friends out. You go fishing. Yeah. Have mom come yeah. along and uh, and catch them up. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, do you, um, you? Go ahead. Catch swordfish. You said you're a commercial commercial guy. Are you selling the swordfish steaks too? Uh, uh well, he's, my buddy that I work for Bahama Mama Charters. He um, he, we have that we have a swordfish permit, so they all go to the um to the uh, market at Farib Farivian. It's up. And it's on Cope and Rose in Pompano. It's a big fish market. We sell it to them wholesale. Oh. And they supply it to everybody else. Wow. And it's unusual for you to not be out in the water today. Why aren't you fishing? <laughs> uh, try to stay away from that sunburn that I got. Which is like a, <laughs> I look like a lobster. Uh, also, I try to help my mom. I'll do stuff besides fishing. And sometimes in the weekend, there's so many boats out there. It gets to be crazy out there. So I try to limit my time to the weekends if I can, you know, just to help everybody out. Wow. Yeah, and I, where I saw him yesterday, this uh, local tackle store, also custom rod and reel. Um, Jordan, who owns it, is uh, one of the first guys that put our new team shirts in his store, which we're really excited about. Uh, part of the big fishing community as well. So we'll have to, uh, you know, get, get him on the show one of these times too. Um, a great group over there. They have sofas in the store. You just go hang out. Nice. Yeah. I like it. That's great. Well, you yeah, got great. So my you, favorite tackle store in Florida. That's you're gonna be to go. you're gonna be spending time with your mom today. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. Grass, <laughs> uh, trimming hedges, doing stuff besides fishing. So, yeah. which is good though. I can't complain. So, well, family's my passion, my friend. So, God bless you for doing yeah. that. Yeah. No. Thank you. Um, any any plans on uh, going out and doing any fishing this coming week? Yes, I got. I'm fishing with my buddy Carl on Slob City Charters on Monday, so we should see. And I'm probably going to fish a couple of days this week. And then I got. I think we're going sword fishing Friday and Saturday, so we'll find out. So when, it looks like I got a busy week coming up here. So when when you go sword fishing, what is what is a typical uh, trip? How long is a typical trip? Uh, when they go sword fishing commercially, mm -hmm. um, here's what happens. We end up, I end up getting to the, my buddy's boat, which he lives up in Boynton, and I live in Boca, so it's not too far of a drive. I get there around like 10, 30, 11. We load ice, and then we load the ice on the boat, and then we uh, get all the baits on top, then we rig the baits, then uh, we load them into the fish boxes where we keep them, and then we put the balls on the boat. So it's literally, you start at 11 o'clock in the morning, and the time you get done fishing the next morning, you're probably you're up for morning. like 14 hours <laughs> by the time you're done. Holy smoke. So you're out there for like 24 hours? Pretty much, yeah. You're up all night. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Wow. And then, you don't, and then the time you stay, if you catch a lot of fish, you got to 
pull them all out of the boat. You got to offload them, then you got to take them to the market. So really, your day doesn't end until probably one thirty or two o'clock in the afternoon the next day, and you're up at eleven o'clock the, the day before. So that's how long your wow. day. Wow. Well, I had no it's, idea it was that kind of a deal. I don't think I, yeah, well, I, I wouldn't survive that. I got to be honest. I, this guy wouldn't make that. <laughs> no. What size boat? What size boat are you fishing on, Jim? A thirty-two contender, step pole contender. <clears throat> You're sleeping where you can, right? You're just kind of catching a couple of Z's here and there. Yeah, if you can. Most of the nights you don't even get any Z's until you stop. And it's it's it's, it's definitely wear and tear on your body, but it's, wow. it's well worth it though when you catch them. So wow, we that is commitment. Year, we, caught, we caught one last year, right? Like a week before Thanksgiving, it was 671 pounds on the hand line. Wow. So one of the biggest fish I've caught out here, and like the fifth or sixth biggest fish caught in Florida. So it was well worth it. Good gravy. So you're, I've heard this hand line before, and I don't recall what the answer is. This is literally, is it like a, I don't want to say a rope, but it's not like a line, like fishing line, is it? No, it's like a, it's like a big, it's like a, it's almost like a dock rope, but it's not, it's called like tuna braid. It's like, um, it, it's like thin diameter rope that, you, that when the fish takes off, you have to wear gloves or it'll burn your hand. That's so what it's I'm, like, yeah. but, but it gives it like, it's almost like, braided line where when the fish goes to take out it's not it doesn't get in the current doesn't you know how mono stretches out in the current and it like floats the floats more mm -hmm. this stuff doesn't float it like sinks so it's, when the fish goes to take down it is you're really up and down with them so it really helps you um keeping tight on the fish compared to like mono where it has a lot of belly and slack in the line where you can shake you off wow well very That's interesting my friend I'm sorry, Carolyn. Say it again. I was going to ask how long it took to get that 600-pounder to the boat. Five hours. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, wow. But yeah, then we, then we tried to – we were so tired. We had three of us, and they were pulling as hard as they could. And it took us – we tried to put it in the boat for 30 minutes, and they were wondering why we couldn't get to the boat because we didn't realize it was that big. So <laughs> we couldn't get in the boat, and then we had to drag it home from Palm Beach all the way back to Boynton. So it was – it was one of those nights you won't forget, that's for sure. Wow. Didn't worry about sharks or anything coming up? Oh, yeah. We we had a tiger shark come up and try to eat it. By, we had to, like, defend them off with a gaff and stuff. But it was, And then we had to drive away from them. It wasn't pretty, but after we got away from them, was, we were fine. But wow. we kept an eye on them the whole time. So. <laughs> oh, my it goodness. That sounds like a hair-raising experience there now. That'll, oh, keep, that'll keep you awake. Lord, have oh, mercy. Yeah. Sure. My goodness. Definitely will. Wow. All right, my friend, we are out of time and up against a break, Jim. Thank you so much for taking time to call in. I would like to have you back on sometime in the future. You can give us an update about some of the things that you're doing. Okay, sir, definitely will, for sure. Thank Let you. I really appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate your Thanks. time. Uh, go ahead, Carolyn. Thanks, Jim. I'll see you at the store. All right. Whoop, whoop. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped. Even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. 
Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packard, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com. For all your toner needs, all toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner call or email us today do you have an unusual pet did you know that the rainforest clinic in loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets they see pets that other vets don't parrots and chickens ducks geese turtles snakes goats pigs lizards and even monkeys are you a beekeeper dr club the first of her kind in the area yes she takes care of bees as well Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care? They're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care. 561-793-9992. They're located in Royal Palm Beach. That number, 561-793-9992. Call for your appointment today. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. We have ignition. Strap in. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. All I grab my fishing pole and cast it in the water. I fish until dawn. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing and falling on. When the sun shines all day. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning. If you're just joining us, we will have archives set up, and you can find them on Fishing in Florida Show on Facebook. There will be a link there. And uh, different ways you can listen to us, go to WCETFM.com or WCETRadio.com. And we have a player there. Or you can download our app. It's free. No push notifications, no spyware, no adware. You can find it uh, major stores. I think it's in the Google and the Apple stores. If you search for WCETFM or if you f- uh, search for Fishing in Florida, uh, you'll find it that way as well. Um, another way you can listen to us is if you, of course, if you go to our, our uh, home network, WCT Radio, and there's a player. Or, uh, let's see, I already said the, the uh, Facebook page and the app. Last way is that if you have the TuneIn app, you can listen to us on TuneIn. If you go to Marina Rock Radio, that is Yacht Rock sister station out of Miami. That is one of our latest affiliates. Thank you, Marina Rock. Greatly appreciate it. Um, you can go there on the TuneIn station and uh, tune in. Uh, Marina Rock on Sunday mornings, and you can get us that way. So a couple of different ways you can listen to us. We're making it easier all the time, and greatly appreciate you guys taking the time to to join us. This morning I have Carolyn, and Carolyn is with Atlas Tracks. Thank you for joining me, Carolyn. Welcome back. 
Oh, yeah. Sunday with you, it's uh, it's like a common thing now. <laughs> I think I have my next guest on on the line. That is uh, Captain Clyde Fulce. He's also known as the Crappie Psychic. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Rascala, and good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Clyde. How'd you do with the storm? We did fine. I'm uh, I'm only 40 miles west of uh, New Orleans, so we really didn't get much of anything. We were blessed. And, uh, you know, the more I look at the news, uh, people need to realize that Lake Charles was actually blessed, too, because the way the eye came in, the major storm surge went into an area that was all marsh and uninhabited. Wow. So if that if that eye would have been, you know, another 50 to 70 miles west, Lake Charles would have felt all of that wind along with a major, major storm. Uh, you know, storm surge. Wow. They were talking about this. I've never heard this term before, an unsurvivable um, storm surge. i have never heard that before. I said, holy smokes, man. What are they talking about? Right. And they were saying in some places as much as 30 feet that the water was going well, to be. They, they were blessed because of the way it came in. Yep. If, if it would have been just 50 to 75 miles further west, they would have got a tremendous storm surge. You know, as mm. it is, the, wow. the storm surge went right east of them into a 30-mile, uh, you know, inland marsh area that was that's uninhabited. Wow. So with this, yeah, coming, but, go ahead, Carolyn. Oh, unsurvivable storm surge. The other one I never heard before was they were saying, if you plan on staying, make sure you have tools to break out through your attic. Oh, and I've yes, never I even heard, heard that. that before. Yeah, I'd heard right. that. Right. Well, they said that because they experienced that with Katrina in yep. the New Orleans area. Yep. The so water was... they, they, when you go through that experience and you see what can happen, that's why, and they, and they were also um, they were also asking them to put their name next up Ken and everything in a Ziploc bag uh, and carry it in their pockets. Mm. My goodness! Wow. Well, with this thing coming through, how did it affect your fishing up there? Well, it didn't really affect us that much. I mean, the water did come up, but believe it or not, there was a uh, major fishing tournament. Uh, up north on Washita River, uh, right after, I mean, just a day or two after huh. the storm. Wow. And uh, the storm went up there as a Category 1 hurricane way up north where this tournament was. And uh, my pro staff members, uh, Tim Abair and Andre Smith, actually placed fifth. And this was the American Crappy Trail uh, Washita River Championship. So uh, they had a they had a very good tournament there, and I, I'm not sure how many boats participated, but I'm sure it was 60 plus. Mm. And um, they uh, they they finished fifth, and uh, they've been having a very very good run. Uh, they've been winning a lot of tournaments. They've been ending up in the top five in a lot of them. And uh, fishing tournaments are tough. You got to have if it's a two day tournament, you got to have two really good days to you know to be in that top five. Wow. You can't have any you can't have any mess ups. And uh, if it's a three day tournament, same thing. You gotta have three good days. You, you can't falter. Yeah. And uh, these guys are these guys are locked in and they're doing extremely well. I'm very much looking forward to seeing them in Branson, Missouri at the end of October for uh, Mr. Crappie, uh Wally Marshall's uh, big crappie expo there. It's a two hundred thousand dollar payout. Wow. Wow. And they, they're all using your secret sauce, Captain Clyde? Yes, they are. They are definitely using the psychic sauce. <laughs> they love it. They actually um, they do a lot with it. Uh, they are big-time believers in it. They use a lot of my lures that I have. And, uh, you know, the thing about fishing tournaments, you, you, have to, you have to have a serious arsenal. So, you know, I can't sit here and say, well, that's all they use is my lures. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they don't. They use, they, they have, <laughs> you name it, they have it in that boat. Because uh, sometimes a crappie won't, they don't want to hit on anything. And so you got to have an arsenal. And they do. But pretty much everything they throw, they put, put a little bit of my psychic sauce <laughs> on it. 
Well, I I don't know how long ago. down to South Florida. <laughs> he's he's been down to Tampa, I think, right? Kevin Clyde, you were down to Tampa. Yes, I have I have been down to Tampa. Um and uh at one point I had someone in that area was supposed to be doing some networking for me and supposed to be making things happen for me. And, uh, but that didn't pan out. Yeah. So it's hard for us. We're a very, very small company and, you know, it's basically just my wife and I now, I mean, my son's 24 years old. He's moved out. He's got his own place. He's got his own job. I mean, he's, you know, he's living his life. And, um, you know, the crappie psychic is so small you know, we can't support much more than my wife and I, hmm. and, uh, my, my daughter's, uh, actually she is pregnant right now. So I am going to be a papa, <laughs> Congrats. which is, thank you. Thank you very much. My wife and I are very, very excited. Well, I was so, going to, um, I was going to say, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe about a year or so ago. I bought some of, uh, Captain Clyde stuff because I I was really I'm just lazy if you want to know the truth it was I was taking my grandkids fishing around the canals here we have canals all over the place where I'm at canals and lakes and we were I, I took them out there and I was using worms one day and it's just messy it's you know it's, it's, it's just messy there's no other way to describe it and uh, so I decided well I'm going to send out for some of this stuff that uh, Captain Clyde's always talking about these I think you call them trailers right I think it's, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. Little guys. Yes, like, they did. look like little worms. And um, all I did is put that on. I didn't put anything else on. Put that on, and with a bobber, believe it or not. And then I had them throw it out there. The bobber acted as a little weight to get it out there, and then kind of jerk it around a little bit, and kind of make it look like it might be living or you know. And we caught fish. We caught. Uh, they were they were happy. I was happy. It was such a it was such a, a cleaner way for me because the other way is you, you get to put the uh, worm on the hook. Well, as soon as you puncture the worm, all this wonderful stuff comes out. And it's sticky and gooey and all <laughs> over your fingers. And oh my gosh! So this and the smell wasn't all that great either. <laughs> so this stuff was uh, this was much much better, much cleaner, much easier to use, and um, didn't have to keep. You know, if you caught a fish, it didn't necessarily rip it off. I think they caught maybe four or five fish before I had to replace one of them. So it was better all the way around for me, and they loved it. They loved it. And, and they weren't bothering me every well, five seconds. You know, poppy, poppy, I lost my worm. <laughs> right. Well, here in Louisiana, they don't have to. you don't have to mess with worms or crickets, which uh, crickets and worms are two of the main baits for uh, brim fishing here. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, it, most of the people, if you if you get them on a on a bed of some nice size brim, you know, not not the little tiny ones, which which I call crumb snatchers. <laughs> I mean, the, the the crappy trailer will last. They'll catch fifteen to twenty fish on one of them. Uh, wow. You know, if they're decent sized brim. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the little ones are they'll be always nipping at it, nipping at it, nipping at it, and of course it'll do the same thing that happens to your crickets or your worms a cricket one cricket one nip it's gone yep Yep. but but the worms you know might last a little bit longer but they'll nip the worm to pieces so and that's what i teach in my seminars across the country you know about the brim fishing part of it that if you get on some decent sized brim it's one after the other just non-stop and you don't have to rebate which is which is that's awesome so you you kind of touched on something I was going to ask you about. Uh, you go around the United States and uh, you help actually teach people how to because that's why they call you the crappie psychic. How to fish for a crappie, how to uh, look, what to look for, and the kind of different ways that you can uh, be successful at it. Um, I right. know that you've taken kind of a hit, like a lot of us small businesses have taken a hit because of the um, the restrictions due to this COVID thing going on. Are there any uh, shows coming up? Well, uh, right now that everything's been canceled since March, wow. and uh, we've we've taken a major major hit. And uh, but right now, our next show that is actually scheduled to go on is Mr. Wiley Marshall, uh, Mr. Crappie's uh, Crappie Expo in Branson, Missouri, and that is uh, Halloween weekend. So it's the end of uh, October, October. Yeah. and the uh, beginning of November. And uh, then we have another show scheduled in uh, in November in Biloxi, Mississippi. So we've taken a major, major hit, and, and these shows are scheduled. It's not to say that they won't 
eventually yeah, get could canceled, be canceled too. Before, yeah, jeez. But uh, yes, I do. I do teach a lot, and um, what makes my seminars, uh, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back by any stretch. It, what makes them good is I teach a lot of little things that most people don't realize. They don't catch it. They don't, you know, they, they're not they're not aware of these little things. Because I, I am an OCD person, but when it comes to fishing, I'm extreme OCD. So I, I really, really teach a lot of small, small things that when you add them all up, it makes a tremendous difference you know, in your success at crappie fishing. So, I mean, I teach everything from, you know, when to go, what type of weather to look for, you know, what type of days to go, what type of uh, moon phase to look for. So, uh, and, and I'll spend 20 minutes just on that alone, hmm. you know, when to, when to pick your day to go, you know, to, to increase your success. Yeah. You can go anytime you want, you know, yeah. you can go anytime you want, but it doesn't mean you're going to catch. So, I mean, the name of my seminar is Catching More Crappie. Wow. And so that's, that's what I want my customers to do. I want them to catch more crappie. You know, most of my customers already can catch crappie, but I want to heighten their success. I want them to be, you know, catching more crappie when they're out there. Mm-hmm. Have you thought about maybe because of all the restrictions and all the cancellations and all of, all of that stuff, thought about maybe doing something online with people? Well... I did, and what I've done online so far, I do have a YouTube channel, and I don't pay enough attention to it, but I put little teasers on there. I see. My, my thoughts are this, Rascala. If, if, I, um, if I put it online, then there's, no, there's not as much of a draw to these big, giant expos I go to. Mm-hmm. See, these expos, they give me a little bit of a break because I do a seminar every day. So people, and it's advertised. So people right. will, people will see, Hey, the crappie psychic's putting on his seminar at four thirty in the afternoon. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. So they, it draws people to the show. I agree. Yeah. Whereas, so if I had it online, they would just be like, yeah, I watched it two or three times online. Now That's every point. one of my seminars are just a little bit different because mm-hmm. When I when I when I go to a college and do my two and a half hour seminar, then I do have a PowerPoint and I stay pretty close to the same. But when I do a stand up seminar at an expo, every single one of my seminars has some different aspects to it because I do it off the cuff. I just mm-hmm. do it off the top of my head. And um, so when you do it like that, you're gonna some seminars are gonna be just a True. little bit different, yeah. you know, because you're gonna I'm gonna forget a little bit of stuff that I touched on in one seminar and I didn't, you know, and I touched on something a little bit different in this seminar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. Almost like an original when you're doing all the different seminars, it's almost like an original every time that you're doing it. It's exactly. Versus a, exactly like a cookie right. cutter kind of thing. Yep. All right, my friend, I can't believe it. we're out of time already. So it goes so quick. I want to wish you an awesome day. I hope you, uh, you're going to do some fishing today. Uh, I may, I may, depending on what the weather looks like later on this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's getting close to the full moon now, which is, uh, traditionally better to go in the afternoon than the morning. But anyway, if you don't mind, I'd like to tell people how to get in touch with us Absolutely. and uh, check our page out. Yeah. Uh, you can go to, go to our website, www.thecroppypsychic.com. Uh, we have a pretty awesome website and, um, we also have a Facebook site, The Crappie Psychic. And also, if you want to reach us here at the office, the number is 985-790-0862. And I also do chartered crappie fishing trips. The best of the chartered crappie fishing trips. <laughs> <laughs> No doubt, and I'm so excited about your daughter and the upcoming baby. That's great news. I'm I'm so thrilled for you. Yes, we are too. Because uh, you know I'm approaching sixty, and and I've been wanting to be a grandpa for a while. You got your wish, my friend. Congratulations. Well, she's pregnant. I'm going to keep praying that the, everything goes fine, healthy pregnancy, and that uh, she does deliver Amen. us a beautiful grandchild. Amen. All right, my friend. Awesome day to you. God bless. And uh, looking forward to having you back on with some updates. Go ahead, Carolyn. Thank you. See you soon. 
Thank you very much. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions, don't text and drive. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner call or email us today while other stations just talk a good game we win it hey sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning, good morning. If you're just joining us again, we will have archives set up on the Fishing in Florida Show on Facebook. So if you go to Facebook, find the Fishing in Florida Show, give us a like while you're there. And uh, you'll find a link to the archives. That's also another way you can listen to the show. Click on Contact Us. You can listen to the show that way. Go to WCETFM.com. Click on the player. You can listen to us that way. Download our app. It's absolutely free. You can listen to us that way. Try to make it as easy as we can for you so that uh, you can join in the fun every Sunday morning. Uh, This morning, I have Carolyn. Carolyn is with Atlas Tracks. If you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to talk to my friend Carolyn. Over there at Atlas Tracks. Welcome back, my dear. Thank you, Riscala. I always love talking to Clyde. He's got such a, a good view on so many things and, uh, you know, on the crappy. Uh, That's why the they call him the awesome. crappy psychic. <laughs> <laughs> and my next guest, well, it's one of my favorite people. And, of course, she's in one of my favorite places down here in the Keys. And that would be Angelia. Good morning, Miss Angelia. Welcome. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? How are you? I, owe you, I know I owe you a map you asked for, so I'll get that out for you later. That's awesome. I had another crazy day on the water yesterday, Carolyn, and if you take a look at it, you'll see <laughs> I covered some ground. Oh, so, my uh, Yeah, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing down here because we dodged our second hurricane. Yeah, uh, thank you, you tell, God. No wind. Yeah, we got really, really lucky. I, I'm praying that we get that lucky throughout hurricane season. But uh, it's been a busy week just getting everything back to normal after preparing for a storm that didn't show again, which is fine with me. But um, And the fishing has been wonderful down here. From what I understand, everybody's catching the mahi except for me, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I probably hit my mahi limit in the last few years, and they're not cooperating with me this season. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the, the mahi have been coming in really, really nice, and I've seen some really nice grouper, too, coming in, and it's season, uh, so you can't complain about that. Um, I'm not much of a backcountry fisherman. I kind of goof off, but it's not really my thing. But uh, I saw some guys coming in the other day, and they were tearing the snook up, and that's oh really impressive. That makes me want to go backcountry fishing. Wow. Uh, so it, it, everything seems to be pretty much on track for the summer fishing, and, and the fish are coming in nicely. So no complaints about that at all. And it, the weather is back to absolutely perfect. And you're down in, in Isla Morada, right? I think that's where you are. 
I'm actually in Key Largo this morning, oh. and uh, and of course I'm I'm getting ready to have a day full of pack charters today. <laughs> so it's the you know the weekends are good. We don't want to miss out on the weekends down here. But uh, yeah, the tourist uh, industry is is really doing well down here right now. So we don't really have any complaints. Yeah, I was getting uh, ready to ask night. you. I know for a while there the keys were completely locked down, completely shut down. Then they gradually opened up, and now are they are they back to? I, I hope this is the right word. Normal? <laughs> are they? I would say it's as normal as normal is going to get. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the 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 restaurants and the hotels are doing well. Uh, the resort that I work at is doing very well. The boats are going out every day. The fishing boats are going out. Uh, the excursion boats are going out. And uh, it's been really, really nice. Uh, you know, notoriously, when we get into the fall months, it gets slow down here. But I'm not seeing any sign of it slowing down yet. And after having the road shut down and the keys completely closed to visitors like a ghost town, uh, it's actually really nice even to see the traffic on US-1 just because you know that people are here. Trucks, yeah. trailers, boats, RVs. Uh, it's just really, really nice to see the Keys back to life and, and functioning as normal. And the tourism is nice. And believe it or not, we're getting half of our tourists and our visitors from Florida. Um, wow. They have vacations planned in Cabo or Antigua or here or there. And you're not able to really get out of the country easily without having to quarantine. So it's really nice to see people getting in their cars and driving down to the Keys to get away for the weekends. Yeah, I didn't think uh, about that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's refreshing. It's really nice. And, uh, you know, we, we don't have to quarantine. You don't have to get on an airplane. You don't have to leave the country. <laughs> and uh, this is about as tropical and beautiful as you can get, especially when the weather's like it's been for the last few weeks, minus a couple windy days around that storm, of course. But, um, but yeah, it's been really, really good down here. Fishing's been good. The wildlife has been really healthy. Um, I, I posted a picture this last week of a dolphin that just put on a complete and total show for us. It was just amazing. Wow. This guy was going nuts. Yeah. And uh, it's just been really nice. Uh, lots, lots of sea life. Uh, like I said, the fish have been coming in real nice. Um, the mahi are still coming in, not for me, but for everybody else, which is nice. <laughs> but um, but yeah, the Keys are doing great right now. I'm very, very happy about that. I was afraid uh, about our tourist industry not coming back very healthy. And uh, it came back healthier than I would have thought. We're busier now than we were before we shut down for the coronavirus. Wow. So well, that's good news. Yeah. That's great news. Wow. It's well, fantastic. I, I'm looking at the uh, at the radar, and for you guys, you're just absolutely clear down there. There's nothing going on with regard to the radar. I don't know what's actually, you know, cloud covered, but it, uh, they're showing storms and stuff of that nature. A lot of stuff happening up, uh, still happening up around the Panhandle and uh, northern Florida. Some nasty weather looks like it's moving in and probably going to hit us around, uh, hit us, hit them, the West Coast. Uh, about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But other than that, it's going to be a gorgeous day. Everything is moving away from us. It's moving to the east, from the west into the east. So by the time that stuff runs into Tampa and the, and the Cape Coral area and comes across, it'll probably be nothing by the time it gets to us. Which so. is wonderful. Yeah. And we've been even missing out on all that rain down here. Um, some days uh, down here, you know, we get those little spotty squalls in the afternoon, but we haven't even gotten any of those this week. But it's kind of nice when you can look up into the Everglades from from Bayside and you can see it raining and you can see the thunder and lightning up in there. But yeah. we have it beautiful with clear skies. <laughs> so it's just really kind of nice. Uh, we, we haven't had much rain or weather at all. Um, even when that storm passed south of us last weekend, or when was it, Monday, uh, we got very, very little rain and some some winds. But uh, we really didn't get affected much by it at all. So we are very, very blessed this season to not have been hit by any of these storms as of yet. I'm going to knock on some wood and keep my fingers crossed. Did, but, did yeah, you see any, lovely. any changes in the fishing as this thing was approaching? Because I, I, many of the guests that come on tell me that as the barometric pressure changes, so does the fishing. Did you see any of that happening? Absolutely. And that's what I was, exactly what I was going to say, Rascal, is uh, when that barometric pressure starts dropping fast, the fish feel it way before we do. They know those storms are coming and they rock up or they go into a safe place and they do not bite the first, the, the mm. last few days before a storm is supposed to come in. They're way more prepared than we are. Wow. And they know when it's coming. But yes, uh, the wildlife, 
pretty much uh, hold up for a few days before the storm and maybe uh, a day after it passed until that barometric pressure got back right. I mean, I didn't see a dolphin. I didn't see a ray. I didn't see anybody catching a pile of fish. Uh, the bite just kind of shuts down and the wildlife kind of shuts down. And, and like I said, they're super smarter than we give them credit for. Hmm. Uh, they rock up and they, and they hole up in safe places and they know. They just know. They can feel that barometric pressure drop. Wow. Angelina, what kind of trip do you have today? You said you got a charter. Are you going out fishing? Are you uh, doing some diving? No, I'm, I've got a private snorkeling charter, and I will probably go to Rascala's favorite place out to Ooh. Alligator Reef. that has just <laughs> been absolutely on fire. It's been beautiful. Uh, the water is still glowing emerald green. It's cleared up from what little bit of wind we had. Uh, yesterday, I cruise down Oceanside uh, doing an, an excursion, just kind of an eco-tour excursion. But this sandbar, the Isla Morada sandbar, it was a Saturday. It was a beautiful Saturday. The weather was great. The water conditions were great. And the Isla Morada sandbar, you get mostly locals out there. But I drove my trip through there just to show them what it looks like. Everybody wonders about it. It's kind of iconic. And I bet you there were 300 boats out there. No it was way. so nice to see. Oh, it was so nice to see everybody just enjoying wow. themselves and the good weather and floating in the water and uh, beautiful boats, beautiful weather. Uh, it, it's just really, really nice to see everybody enjoying themselves in a normal way. <laughs> I know a lot of the places in the country don't get to have that normalcy, so I'm very, very uh, grateful that the normalcy down here is, is really intact. And to see everybody out in the open and on the water and enjoying themselves, enjoying the weather, enjoying the fishing, mm. it's just really refreshing. The, the water around that lighthouse is just... It, I don't know. I, it's difficult to describe unless you've actually seen it. It's it's like an emerald, emerald colored green, blue, clear. Oh my gosh! I, I, it's what, and, thirty feet deep. I tell you what, too. It, it's not even that deep. It, it's fifteen or twenty foot deep, and as beautiful as that water looks from the surface, which I've put pictures up about, I can't stay on the boat. I have to get in the water with a mask on. <laughs> and at the moment that you drop yourself in the water with a mask on, it is a whole new world. The whole game changes. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, the fish up around the alligator lighthouse, re, uh, the marker itself, um, you don't swim underneath that marker. It's dangerous. But up underneath the actual lighthouse, I bet you there are tens of thousands of tropical fish. It wow. is just a phenomenon it blows people's minds that have never been down here and never experienced it and that's on top of the nurse sharks the tarpon the, the turtles the the sea rays the you name it but the amount of fish underneath that marker and i mean tropical aquarium style fish is just mind-boggling it's a sight mm. to behold wow. i'm gonna have to get a new underwater camera so that i can show everybody <laughs> So, yeah, have... as pretty as the water looks from the surface, once you put your head in the water with a mask, it is just amazing. It's a whole new world. We'll have to change your name to Jockey. <laughs> you, 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 you remember, uh, now I'm giving my my age, you remember Jacques Cousteau, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so I watched every episode as a child. Okay, we'll <laughs> I'm change, aging myself, too. Yeah, I'm changing your name to Jockey. <laughs> well, you go down I there and bring back the... <laughs> I wish I could experience half of what he did, but I oh, sure do amazing. enjoy exploring the waters down here. Uh, it, it truly is magical this time of year. It's just amazing. And by the way, the water temp down here is about 89 degrees. Wow. So it's, really it's warm. just, oh, it's really warm, really clear, really comfortable. It's a really pleasant place to get yourself in the water and be able to see this amazing wildlife that's just we're surrounded by. Mm. You know, but until you put your face in the water, you don't really get it, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and I encourage everyone to do that because it's just an experience that you can't miss. You really so have to do it. World. If you love the water, mm. you got to do it. Different world altogether when you put the mask on and get down underneath there. Completely different dimension. Absolutely. Yeah. I was swimming in a big pot of bait fish the other day. Um, and I mean, millions of little bait fish everywhere. I could have done a 360 underneath the water and they were just, as far as I could see everywhere and bumping Whoa. into you, you know, <laughs> brushing against you. And it's just awesome. And then wow. to boot, we've got all the lobster on the bottom right now oh, uh, yeah. that are, that, that it's season and, and everybody's having a good time with that too. Yeah. So yeah, the water down here is absolutely magical right now. Wow. 
Well, we're almost out of time. I want to give Carolyn an opportunity to say goodbye to you before we go. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time and always being there for us on Sunday and giving us the reports on what's going on in the Keys. I greatly appreciate it. Oh, it is my pleasure, I assure you. Absolutely. And, Andrea, stay in touch with me during the week. And uh, when I do one of these crazy blast trips down there, I need to make sure I hook up with you next time. Absolutely, Karen. I'm looking forward to it, too, hon. Thank you. All right, my friends, we are about out of time, and it's gone so quickly. It's the fastest two hours I do here. It seems like no sooner than we get somebody on, we're back off on, and uh, right now we're completely out of time. So thank you so much for taking time to listen in. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us at WCETFM.com or WCETRadio.com. We'll be back in a week. God bless. <laughs>